So uh, today we're going to set up the uh, TG6000 for uh, swept signal generation, tracking generator, using the 8566 uh, spectrum analyzer from Hewlett Packard. This is the uh, TG6000. It's been configured for sweeping the, the high band of the um, 8566, which uh, goes from 2 to 5.8 gigahertz. This is the front panel connections. I'm trying to show you right here. Uh, I haven't turned it on yet, but we have the actual si tracking signal out. There's a 6 dB pad and then another 6 dB pad. And right here is our, our DUT, which is just a piece of SMA connector. Uh, our, our DUT now is just a, a through device. Uh, here's our first LO connection right here coming off the first LO output of the 8566. And that goes to the rear panel of the TG6000 back here. And that comes in and connects here. Uh, now on the front panel we have to have a jumper uh, cable that connects the internal signal generator of the 6000 to uh, one of two places. For high band of uh, the 8566, we connect it like this. If we were to do low band, we'd move it over here. But for high band operation, we have the jumper set here. Okay, so now looking at the spectrum analyzer display, you can see that we've just turned it on, and this is the typical wake up display of the 8566. The tracking source is off. Now I'm going to turn on the tracking source. Okay, now the tracking source is actually generating the correct tracking signal for the first band, and then after that, it, it can't. It's not capable of that. So I'm going to change the stop frequency to 5.8 gigahertz. And now we have the tracking source uh, showing you the swept display with just a through device of uh, a SMA barrel. Okay, now we want to change the instrument settings so that it's more optimum for using with the tracking generator. Okay, first of all, we can take the reference level. We can come down a little bit. So instead of a, a 0 dBm reference level, we're at minus 10. The other thing you want to do is you want to set your resolution bandwidth differently than the instrument wakes up with. In a swept tracking mode, we don't have to wait for the resolution bandwidth to settle. And so we're actually going to change two things, the sweep time and the resolution bandwidth. So I'm going to take the resolution bandwidth and I'm going to step it down to 10 kilohertz. Okay, now notice the sweep time now is 114 seconds. Well, that won't work. But since we don't have to wait for our filter to settle, our resolution bandwidth, we can change the sweep time. Now that we're going to change the sweep time to 200 milliseconds. Now you're going to get this message over here. It says measurement uncalibrated because when I've set the instrument, the 8566 up for this type of measurement, this is unusual for this instrument and it thinks that it's not going to get a valid measurement. That's because it's expecting to see delay uh, and settling issues with the resolution bandwidth filter. But since the tracking source is always in the center of the resolution bandwidth filter, we don't have that. So this is how you want to set it up. And now we see the swept response using a through from 2 gigahertz to 5.8 gigahertz. What I want to do now is I actually want to take out the 10 dB pad of the 8566 um, so that I get more dynamic range out of the measurement. Now the only way you can do that with the 8566 is to actually enter 0 dB. So you have to say attenuation and then you have to hit 0 and then dB. Now then the 8566 is, is got 0 dB internal. I have my 6 dB pad external and a 6 dB pad here with my dot in between the two. This will minimize the visual issues when you're measuring your dot. So if you want the best match, this is a good way to do it. We have a 6 dB match on the output of the TG and a 6 dB match uh, pad going into the, S, uh, the spectrum analyzer, 8566. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go through and set up um, the display so that we can get rid of this uh, wavy response with our cowl in there. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the B video memory of the 8566 in conjunction with the display line. 
So first we're going to put up the display line. We take the display line and we take this button here, enter, and now we have it. Um, my display line came up about in the right place. You just might have to move it. If you do, uh, you got to use this little knob and put it about midway on the uh, swept response of the through SMA. Then you're going to take the video memory B and you're going to turn it on. And now B and A are actually the same thing, the same swept response. But we're going to take B and we're going to subtract it from the display line. So now we have the error between B video and display line. And then we're going to take this B video and we're going to subtract it from the A video by hitting A minus B into A. Now we've corrected out the variations in the tracking generator signal only in video memory. The, ver the correction is done only in video memory. If I change this frequency span, I would have to redo this. But this allows me, uh, as long as I'm on a fixed frequency span, to correct the uh, output of the tracking generator. So I don't really need the, v, uh, the B memory to see it, so I can just hit blank, and now I've got this uh, Cal uh, display. It's flat. If I remove this, you'll see. Okay, so now we're seeing the through device removed, and now we're seeing uh, the, the full dynamic range of what we can achieve with the 2, 6 dB pads. We get a little bit better than this. If you go down to 3 dB pads, you'll get about 6 dB more of dynamic range. So we reconnect, and we're back up to, the, to our swept through response. Okay? So now what we want to do is we put a marker up there so we can actually measure the delta power. So we're going to go normal, and then we're going to go delta. Now we have a delta marker. And that will be with respect to the display line, which is our reference line, and the swept response. So now you see it says 80 dB approximately between here and the display line, which is our reference line. So we have about 80 dB dynamic range for making our measurements. Here's our through response. So let's go ahead and measure our filter. I have a, a 3 gigahertz filter here. This is a little uh, SMA, SMA, 3 gigahertz bandpass filter. It's made by K&L Microwave. So it's cut for some communication system, surplus. So now we're going to put it in here. And there's the swept bandpass response of the 3 gigahertz filter. If I move the marker over, it would just tell me a little bit more information maybe about the top, if I'd like. Let's see if I can do that. So here we go. So we can see that it's got very low insertion loss at the top of the filter, about a dB. And then we get down here on the skirt, we see that it goes into the noise floor. So it has a high rejection. It's a good filter. Pretty sharp, and it has a good rejection out of band. But not a very narrow filter. It's approximately, this is, uh, a pretty wide frequency span here so it's it's mm, maybe a half a gigahertz wide at the top pretty wide so that uh, that's how you set up the TG uh, 6000 for making swap measurements